Hello friends! So today I thought I would show you my makeup collection. I've been getting more and more requests for this and I realized I haven't done this in a while. Um, I don't anticipate this being a declutter. I'm just going to show you what I have. I guess if I come across stuff that's bad or that I don't like or don't want anymore, I will uh, go ahead and declutter it. So uh, you'll probably be able to tell by the title what this is. Um, but I, I'm really suffering very, very badly from spring allergies. And I just didn't want to put makeup on today. My skin just felt really reactive and hot <laughs> and really, really hot. So anyway, I thought this would be fun since I wouldn't have to be on camera too much. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at my collection. So just a quick overview of my storage. So this is what is behind me. Um, when I'm sitting and facing the camera when I film. So I've got some Ikea drawers. This one is on wheels, which is actually really nice. I can kind of roll that in and out if I need to. And then that is a skinnier, taller drawer that is also deeper, so it sticks out a little bit further, which is kind of annoying. So I have those two behind me. And then on a shelf, uh, just to the right of those Ikea drawers, I have these clear shoe boxes from the container store that pretty much everyone uses. They're not my favorite because uh, they tip over and they get really dirty really quickly, um, but they're okay for now. And then I've got two drawers here. The top one, not so interesting. The bottom one just has some backups and stuff, which I can show you when we get there. And just so you have some reference, we're going to start with this drawer up here and go down and then we'll move to that Ikea drawer and go from top to bottom. So here is the top drawer of that Ikea um, drawer storage unit. Um, so I've got two drawers basically of foundations and uh, primers and things. So over here I will start with some primers that I have and they these drawers are pretty deep but they don't pull all the way out so I have some things like hidden back here. Um, so first I have the Edward Best Precious Pearl Perfector. This is a really beautiful like highlighty lotion. I have the Armani Prima Glow On Moisturizing Balm. I just recently talked about this in an Armani video. I really, really enjoy this. It's a lovely primer, especially if you have dry skin. I feel like it's it kind of lays down a nice moisture barrier. I also have this Tom Ford Radiant Moisture Souffle. It's like another highlighty kind of cream. The Edward Best has more of like a pinky iridescence to it. This one has kind of gold iridescence to it. It's really, really beautiful. I think this has been discontinued. Unfortunately, I don't know why. I have the Surat primer, which is like a silicone based primer. I think this is better suited for more oily skin, uh, but it does look nice like on my cheeks. Like it really helps smooth and like really helps makeup. Like I don't need as much to have the same effect when I use this primer. It's almost like um, eyeshadow primer. So anyway, that's the Surat Perfectionist Primer. Sorry, my air conditioning just went on. I hope it's not too noisy, um, but it's very warm in here right now. <laughs> so this is the Clarins SOS Primer. I have it in Universal Light. There's a bunch of shades in this one, like color correcting shades, but this is a really nice kind of pearly base also. And then I have the Guerlain Meteorites. It's like a cushion primer. It's so pretty. It has little teeny tiny like sponge sponge balls <laughs> in there. And it's a really nice primer. I wish they would make this permanent. It's a really lovely product. And then I have the Sicily um, Blur Expert Powder. This um, works really, really great under foundation. It's such an interesting product. Uh, so that's why I keep it up here. So it really just lays down a nice canvas for foundation application. And then I've got the MAC Strobe Cream in Gold Light. Yeah, in Gold Light. Uh, another kind of shimmery primer. There's obviously a trend here. Um, the La Mer Hydrating Illuminator, which is lovely also. This is a very nice lightweight primer. Um, it's lighter weight than all the ones in the jars that I just showed you. Um, the Terracotta Tinted Skincare Jelly. This is great if you want a little bit of a bronze. Same with this Drunk Elephant De Bronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Serum. Um, I have this Clé de Peau Val Blanc Brightening Enhancer Base. This just sets down kind of like a, a whitish uh, kind of uh, base to your face. And I don't, I feel like this has survived a bunch of collection slash declutter videos. And I don't know what to do with this because it's okay, but I just, it's not my favorite. So maybe, you know what? I'm going to declutter it. I am going to declutter it. The Edward Best Ultra Dewy Complexion Perfector. This is a great, like, tinted moisturizer. This has a really beautiful finish. 
and then I have the Glossier Future Dew Oil Serum Hybrid. I'm still trying to figure out how to use this best. Uh, I feel like when I go onto the Glossier site, they kind of treat it more skincare, but whenever I see anyone else use it, and when I've used it, I prefer using it kind of as like a, like a spot highlighter and just kind of dabbing it onto my cheeks. Um, so yeah, that's the future due from Glossier. This is the new glow tinted moisturizer from Tom Ford. I have it in the shade Fawn 4.0. I really love this product, great for dry skin. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. This is not my favorite, um, merely because it's just not my style of foundation. It, it's, it's matte, it gets glowy, but it's kind of high coverage. I have it in the shade three and I found all of their shades to be a little, like the undertones to be a little bit off for me. So I actually don't use that one too often. The Guerlain L'Essentiel, this is a beautiful lightweight foundation with you know decent coverage, really, really just natural on the skin. Um, this is the NARS Tinted Glow Booster. I have it in medium, and this is really, really nice underneath foundation if you want just a little bit more warmth to your complexion. Um, the Chanel Sublimage uh, Foundation, which is lovely. The Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. I have this in the shade 2N 1.5 Beige. And I like this foundation, but I think this shade is a little bit off too. I think it's like a little bit warm. I can't actually remember clearly. Um, but anyway, that's the Laura Mercier. Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection is okay. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Uh, my two La Mer foundations, I have shade natural 12 and neutral 22 and this I have had forever and it's actually pretty low you know what I think I'm gonna get rid of this I've had this bottle probably for five years yep I'm gonna get rid of it this bottle I bought well maybe four years ago it's separating but if I shake it up it's perfectly fine so, okay, so I'll hold on to this one. I'm going to get rid of that neutral, Just it's just too old. Um, Coconut Aqua Foundation, one of my favorites. The Guerlain Peru Gold, another lovely one. I love, I really love like 99% of all my makeup. I purchased most of it myself and I just, you know, I love all this stuff. So anyway, probably won't be decluttering much again. Probably just getting rid of stuff that's old. Um, the Sicily Sicilier uh, Latent Anti-Aging Foundation. Tom Ford Traceless Stick Foundation, the Terracotta Stick Foundation, the Westman Atelier Stick Foundation, a really lovely one if you're looking for like a clean beauty brand uh, stick foundation. This one is great. I have it in the shade Atelier One, which I could probably mix this with a deeper one, um, like maybe two or three, but the only store that had them in person here was Barney's and they closed. So. It's just hard. If I'm going to start mixing foundations, I'd really like to see it in person. But anyway, that's the Westman Atelier. This is the Suku Nude Wear uh, Liquid Foundation. It's like a serum foundation, and it's so thin, but it actually has really like decent coverage. And I purchased this when I was in Japan, in Tokyo specifically. So definitely keeping this, if anything, for sentimental reasons, but I don't wear it that often. Um, Oh, I have a concealer up here because this concealer actually looks a lot better under foundation, so it's one of those first steps. But this is the Guerlain Multi Perfecting Concealer, and I have it in the shade 1, Claire Dore. The Sicily uh, Fito Tent in number 2, Soft Beige. I love this. The Sicily Double Tensor Instant and Long Term Primer, I guess. Uh, love this product as well. The Guerlain Lore Primer I really enjoy also, and the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer I actually need to try. I have the hydrating one. They sent me all of them, and there was a bunch in there that I didn't think was suitable for my skin tone, so I put that in a giveaway, which is already gone. And I sent one actually to Kate the Great Beauty. I think I sent her the illuminating one because I just, I have so many, <laughs> so many illuminating ones. Um, so I want to try the hydrating one and I haven't gotten a chance to do that. I have to remember this one for like a trying new makeup. Um, so that is this first drawer. All right, here is the second drawer. Got the new Giorgio Armani Neo Nude. I have it in the shade 4.25. Enjoy this product. The Ooh, the Le Beige in medium light from Chanel. This is the Water Fresh tint, which I really enjoy. 
the Clay de Poe Radiant Fluid Foundation with an SPF 24. I have it in the shade 010. This this is okay. This foundation has a lot more coverage than I thought, so I don't reach for it that often, but it's it's very nice on the skin. My beloved Victoria Beckham Augustinus Batter Primer, the Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer. Love this. This also has just the slightest kind of gold shimmer in there. It's really beautiful. I have the Kogendo uh, Powder Foundation. This is the only powder foundation that I decided to keep, I think last year when I decluttered, uh, because this is actually very like light um, and airy on the skin, where I find a lot of powder foundations to be very, very cakey. This one was very, very light. So I kept this one, it's really beautiful. And I can't remember the exact name of it, and there's no sticker on the back, that's weird, but it's this one. <laughs> the Shantikai Future Skin uh, Oil-Free Gel Foundation. I love this, I have it in the shade Vanilla. I have this RMS Uncover Up Cream Foundation in the shade 22. This is um, not bad, actually. I tried this twice, and it, the base of it is coconut oil, I believe. So it does feel a little thick on the skin, but because I have dry skin, I kind of, I don't know, I welcomed it. It wasn't that bad on my skin, and I didn't feel like it got worse throughout the day. It was actually, it's actually not so bad. So that's the RMS uh, cream foundation. Here is the By Terry Starlight Rose Youth Glow Elixir. This was limited edition, I believe, over the holidays. And this is like another one of those kind of shimmery uh, moisturizers that I like to use as a primer. Here is the Shiseido um, Cushion Foundation. It's the Perfecting Cushion. I have it in the shade number 21. And this has the limited edition uh, like embroidery on the front. It's so, so beautiful. Isn't that just great? And it's puffy too. Here I've got the Amor Vixa Complexion Perfector and I don't know what shade I have it in. I purchased this a while ago, maybe late last year, but this is a really lovely um, lightweight, uh, like kind of like a tinted moisturizer if you're looking for one. It's very nice. The Chanel CC Cream, I have it in the shade 20 Beige. This is also really great, especially if you're looking for, you know, a nice boost in your SPF. Uh, this has an SPF 50. This has a pretty high coverage, so I don't reach for this often because of that, but really, really lovely if you are looking for that sort of thing. The Tom Ford Flawless Glow Foundation, uh, SPF 30. I have it in the shade 2.0 Buff. This one is really, really nice. This is very, very radiant. Very radiant. I don't know if this would work for oilier skin types. The Sicily uh, tinted sunscreen cream in number one natural. I love that. The La Mer Reparative Skin Tint. I have it in the shade light 02, but I think it's now light 12. Absolutely love that. I love the Chantecai Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer. That's in vanilla, the shade vanilla. Um, Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Soft Radiance Foundation. I have this in 4.7 Cool Beige. I love this foundation. This foundation has a um, little bit more coverage than I am used to, but it just looks so flawless on the skin. It doesn't look makeup -y or thick at all, so I love this one. And here is the new Sisley Fito Hydro Tint, and I have it in the shade 1. This is a great tinted moisturizer. It is not my favorite. I do prefer like these a little bit more even, and the Armani Prima. There's just something about this one, I feel like it doesn't wear as well. The Armani Prima with SPF 35, this is the CC Glow Moisturizer, I have it in the shade two. I love this product, this one looks really beautiful, and this has a, like a thinner texture than the rest of these. Maybe not this, but the rest of these. Anyway, the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder in 3 Fair. This is really nice, I feel like this, I don't know, I just have to be careful with this. I feel like this looks cakey, quickly so I only can use like a thin layer at least for my preference I can only use like a thin layer of that um, the Ilia super serum skin tint this was really cool this was like kind of like a color adjusting product um, I have to keep playing around with that um, because when I first used it kind of balled up I used it with some skincare and Ilia actually reached out to me and they said try it with less skincare underneath because there's so much skincare in that product alone that kind of don't need any. So I have to try it kind of on its own. The Surat Dewdrop Foundation, which is probably my favorite liquid foundation. It's just flawless on the skin. The Kosas Tinted Face Oil, I still have to try again. I didn't really like it my first go. I just, I don't know, kind of felt weird. Um, the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint, I have this in the shade 
G10. Uh, really nice for that kind of no makeup, makeup kind of day. Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Cushion Foundation. I love. Uh, the Chanel Le Beige Broad Spectrum SPF 30 uh, in the shade Light. I really enjoy this one too. This one kind of falls into the family of all of these. It's just really wonderful. Light medium coverage. Great texture. This one has a little bit of a fragrance to it which is not my favorite, but I do love the way this looks on the skin. The Tom Ford Traceless Cushion Foundation, the Glow Tone Up Foundations. So I have it in the Pink Glow Tone Up, and then I have it in Buff 2.0. So this is the actual foundation. This is more of like a primer. Um, the Three Lab Aqua BB with SPF 40. I have this in the shade one. This is a great cushion also. I need to kind of pull this out for summertime. That's a good one. Um, the Sisley cushion, I have it in the shade three light rose. I love this cushion. This is one of my favorite cushion foundations. The Clay de Peau radiant cushion foundation in 020. Uh, this was not my favorite. This oxidized on my skin. Uh, so not my favorite. The La Mer Cushion Foundation in Neutral Ivory 12. This also was not my favorite foundation. I thought compared to their Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation, the one in the bottle, that this just wasn't even close. It just didn't look that special on my skin. Um, it's okay. It's okay, but it's definitely not my favorite. I definitely don't reach for it as much as all of these other ones. The La Prairie Cushion Foundation. Um, I was using this a lot, I want to say... Maybe, was it last summer or the summer before? I'm losing track of time, but this is a really nice one. I found this one to hold up really, really well in humidity because I remember I brought this when I went back to New York and, you know, New York is humid and this really did well. So I have it in the shade Pure Ivory N20. And then I have the Guerlain Perure Gold Cushion in 01N Pale Beige. I got this in Japan also really really enjoy this one too this one has a really nice finish all right that is drawer number two i'm going to put everything back and then we'll move on to drawer number three and drawer number three is like concealers and powders so okay let's start with the concealers over here i've got my favorite dior forever skin correct concealer in 2n i love that um i have a bunch of the Pat McGrath concealers. Um, they sent um, a few shades to me and I purchased one myself. I think I purchased, I can't remember anymore. I think I purchased L7 um, and they sent me a bunch of other ones. So they're all fairly close and I really enjoy this concealer. So I'm gonna hold on to these. The Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. I have this in shade 4.5. I really enjoyed that concealer. The Estee Lauder Double Wear Radiant Concealer in shade 1C Light Cool, also a great one. The Kosas Concealer in 5.5. This shade is a little bit off, but I really, really liked this formula. And <laughs> now that I'm uh, looking at this, I meant to get a more appropriate shade during the VIB sale and completely forgot. Oh well. Okay, so that is 5.5. I really do like that formula a lot. Here is the Hourglass um, Vanish Concealer in Cotton. Is there a shade number? I don't see a shade number. This one, um, this one is okay. This one is definitely not one of my favorite concealers. It's okay, but I feel like it doesn't wear well. I feel like it wears away quickly and it doesn't, it doesn't look good when it's wearing away. It's not like you just all of a sudden look like you don't have concealer on. It looks like it looks like you have worn away concealer on. So I think that's an unpopular opinion. I think people really love this concealer. So maybe I need to just keep playing around with it. And then I have a bunch of these like pen type concealers. This is the La Prairie. Um, it's like a correcting brightener. That one's really lovely. I don't know what shade I have because it's not on here. The Chantecaille Le Camouflage Stilo. This is really lovely. I have it in the shade... I feel like it's like two or something. Anyway, this is a great like lightweight kind of concealer. Um, the Touche Clot, the Sisley. These two are similar in my book because they're both very lightweight. The YSL is probably a little bit creamier. The Sisley I really, really love. This is a Stilo Lumiere. And I have this in shade two. And I have the Touche Clot in shade 1.5. These are both really lovely. The Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Liquid Concealer not really my favorite it's okay i kind of feel the same way about it as i do the hourglass it just doesn't wear away 
that nicely and I feel like towards the end of the day it really starts to emphasize my fine lines um, so that's the Charlotte Tilbury uh, the YSL Touche Clot high cover radiant concealer this one was very nice and I have this in shade 1.5 also and here is the Clay de Poe uh, Radiant Corrector for Eyes in the shade Ivory. And this is one of my favorites. Love it. It has just a little bit of like shim, not shimmer to it. That's too strong of a word. Just It's very highlighty and there's a little bit of like a sheen to it. It's, it's gorgeous. Here's my Kogan Doe Moisture Fit Concealer. This is another good one. This has some really decent coverage and looks very natural under the eyes. The Clay de Poe Ivory Stick Concealer, love this. It's great high coverage. I mean, just really, really great. The Surat um, Stick Concealer, I have this in the shade number three. This is another great stick concealer. And then the Glossier Stretch Concealer in G11. I don't use this that often, but I do like it. I mean, I, you know, I have a ton of concealers, uh, but I do like this one. And then I have a couple Pam concealers. I have two of the Surat um, Perfectionist Concealer palettes in shade two and three. And depending on what time of the year it is, basically, we'll determine which one I use. Two is lighter, three is deeper uh, and warmer. Um, and then I have the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage in SC3. I've only used it like a handful of times. This is really, really high coverage. Um, so I hold on to that just for special occasions. Oh, and then I have this Edward Bess Undo Time Blurring Perfector. This is actually a decent concealer also. And then I have some eye primers. This is the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base in the shade Light. This is my favorite one. Um, my next favorite one probably is this Viseart Seamless Eye Primer. This is like a very silicone base. It's a very smoothing. Um, this one is a little bit more grippy. And this is just a backup of the Viseart. And then we have all of my powders. Um, let me move these pressed powders out of the way. Um, I have, let's see, a bunch of the By Terry Hyaluronic powders in here because they came out with tinted ones. So this is shade number two, Apricot Light. This is Natural, I believe, yep, 200. And this one is number one, Rosy Light. Love them all, they're not going anywhere. This is the, um, Translucent Loose Setting Powder Glow version from Laura Mercier. And this by itself I find a little bit too glowy, but when I mix it, sometimes I'll mix it with like my Kogan Doe powder just for a little bit of something. It's really pretty. So I'm glad I have this little bottle of it because it's nice as like an add-in. And then I have a lot of Guerlain Meteorites. These two are part of the regular line. The rest of these are special edition, limited edition that you may be able to find here and there, like these two, I think, um, are still available in some places. Um, and then I have my Kogan Doe Natural Lighting Powder, which is probably the powder I use the most. Uh, the Chanel Translucent Loose Setting Powder, I have it in the shade Translucent, Translucent One? Oh no, 20 Clair. It's the shade I have it in. Then I have the La Prairie Skin Caviar Loose Powder in the shade Translucent One. This is, like, if you want to, like, coverage, this is a great, uh, powder if you're looking for some more kind of like flawless coverage. I will warn you this has a lot of fragrance. So much so that I find it hard to use sometimes. It's like I have to mentally prepare for it. Um, but it, it looks beautiful on the skin. I have the Kogan Doe Sheer Lucent Powder. This is a gorgeous powder also. I like to use this one um, as well as a natural lighting powder, but this one I kind of like to use as a light finishing powder. It just has a really lovely kind of like airiness to it. It's really beautiful. Uh, the YSL Souffle de Clot in shade number 02. I think this has been discontinued, but this is a really nice powder. The Clay de Poe Translucent uh, Loose Setting Powder. There's only one shade, and I love this powder. This powder brought me around to loose powders in general, and I love it. It's really beautiful. I had to stick it all the way in the back of my drawer to stop reaching for it. I mean, I've started using this a lot. I'm probably gonna have to do the same thing to this one, um, but it's it's really beautiful. Sisley Loose uh, Face Powder in One Irise. Uh, this, I like this powder now that I know how to use it. I use it as a finishing powder and I have to buff it in. If I don't buff it in, I, it just doesn't look good. It looks very cakey and makeup-y um, and the, the little micro glitters in there just are really obvious. So I have to buff this one in as a finishing powder. And when I do, it's 
gorgeous. Here is the Lancome Absolute Powder in Absolute Pesh. This is really beautiful. And I also have the Absolute Pearl. The Absolute Pesh has a little bit of glow. The Absolute Pearl is a little bit more matte. These are both really, really lovely. I have to start using them more. I just got them late last year. Oh yeah, when I went to Houston. That's when I purchased these. Um, so those are lovely. I have this Givenchy Prism Libre powder. This is in 5 Satin Blanc. And this is like a limited edition cover, but the this powder combo, because it has four chambers, uh, is part of their regular line. This is another powder that I enjoy. I just, I find it a little fussy to use because you have to try and get powder out of each of these four chambers. But other than that, it's really lovely. Oh my God, there's so many more back here. Oh, here's the Decorte Translucent Powder. I was not a fan of this powder. I'm trying to remember, I used it a couple times and then just kind of tucked it away. I think it made my face look dry. I think that was a problem. It wasn't just matte. It was a little bit drying. It looked terrible under my eyes, I remember. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this because like I said, I only used it a couple times, but I'll hold on to it for now. And then this is the Kogendo. I believe this was like the sheer moist powder. Uh, there's only Japanese on the bottom here, so I, I don't remember, but this was limited edition. And this was really, really lovely. In fact, I think I, I need to use this one. Great, great, great for dry skin. So that's another beautiful Kogendo loose powder. All their loose powders are gorgeous. And then I've got the original by Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. I really like the tinted ones a lot more than this. And then I have the Viseart Setting Powder. This is another one of those powders that's like, like white. This looks beautiful underneath my eyes. Very, very blurring. In fact, I feel like this is the loose powder version of the Pat McGrath uh, Blurring Under Eye Powder. So that's the Viseart Setting Powder. Oh, this is just uh, like a travel size of the La Prairie Powder. This comes with the big ones, so you actually get quite a bit of powder for the high price tag. The Chantecaille Talc Free Powder. This is another lovely powder. I have a lot of lovely powders. <laughs> and here is the Terracotta Powder from Guerlain. I have it in Claire Light, and it's actually, you can see, it's actually very peachy and warm. It's not very light at all and this powder leaves quite a bit of coverage and has that cool like sponge top. I remember I brought this to New York uh, last year when I traveled because I wanted something that was travel friendly and it just always gave me such a like high glam kind of look because it was so like it just added coverage and it was like so flawless and it brightened up my skin and everything. It was like definitely not for like a no makeup makeup kind of day. It was definitely for like a glam look. Really lovely and has the terracotta scent, which I enjoy, but if you don't, not good. And then here are my pressed powders. I've got the Hourglass um, Trio, the original Trio. What is this called? The Ambient Lighting Palette. I have the two Pat McGrath um, Blurring Under Eye Powders that I just mentioned. I have Light and Medium. Here is the Chantecaille HD Perfecting Powder. Very lovely. The La Mer Sheer Press Powder, I have it in the shade Light. This is one of my favorites. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in One Fair, another one of my favorites. The famous Chantecaille Perfect Blur Finishing Powder, part of the Hummingbird Collection that just came out. This is like a baked gelée formula. It is so beautiful. It really blurs once you get it on, and I love using it with the Sony G Face One brush. It's just stunning. The Guerlain Poror Gold um, Gold Radiance Powder. This one is nice. It's very fine. It has like a little bit of like a gold highlight in there, so you end up with like a little bit of shimmer when you brush your brush over the entire pan. It's really, it's nice, and it's a very fine powder. Here's the By Terry Brightening CC Powder in Apricot Glow. This is gorgeous. If you were to brush this all over, it gives you like warmth to the skin. It adds like just a little bit of coverage. The Guerlain gives you more coverage for sure. This is a little bit lighter in that arena, but it has like the same kind of tone and the same kind of brightness. It's really, really pretty. And then I have two of the limited edition Clay de Peau pressed powders. This is Pink Push Me. This is Blooming Cherry. This Pink Push Me is a little bit cooler than this Blooming Cherry one. I have this Chantecaille Candlelight um, HD Perfecting Loose Powder in this Great Travel. I'm not, I'm like not the biggest fan of this brush. You really have to like get a lot of powder out and this is just not my favorite kind of like dispensing system. I prefer this a lot more. This sponge top is great. The Kogendo, it's all in Japanese. Um, this is like the Brightening Moisture Powder. 
love this. Love it. It just, oh, it's so brightening on the skin. It, it just has such a beautiful sheen. Absolutely love this. This was limited edition. I think it's available again, uh, but it's gorgeous. The Giorgio Armani Neo Nude powder in the shade four. The Lila B B Natural Flawless Finish Foundation. I think I need to toss this. This I've had for a very long time. Yeah, I wanna say I've had this. I think I purchased this in New York before I moved here. So I am going to throw that away. The Bobbi Brown Nude Finish Illuminating Powder in Nude. I am embarrassed to say I have never use this. The Chantecaille uh, face powder. This is a gorgeous, it's like very soft, it's almost like a gel powder kind of powder. It's really, really pretty on the skin. Very different from the Hummingbird. The Hummingbird was like that baked gelée. This has a softer um, formula and um, you'll pick up a lot more product. You'll put down a lot more product. So there's a little bit uh, more coverage with this one, but just really beautiful. I have this little itty bitty dim light from Hourglass. I feel like this must have been a free gift or something, or someone gave it to me. I don't know where this came from. And then the Guerlain Meteorites uh, in pressed form. I don't like this nearly as much as I like the actual pearls, uh, but when I travel, this is okay. This is like another baked product, so it's a little bit hard to pick up the product. You really have to use a dense brush, but it's nice. All right, so let me put all this back. Um, I think actually I'm gonna rearrange this stuff. I'm gonna put these in the back and bring out some of the other ones that I've had hidden. I forgot to mention these because they were sitting on top of the press powders, but this is the Chanel uh, Le Beige Healthy Glow Sheer Powder number 10. That's this guy. I don't use this that much. I don't like this as much as I like my other press powders, but it's okay. It's not bad. It's okay. This YSL 3D powder is so cool because it has such an interesting sheen. Once you swatch it, you get this kind of like really pretty kind of like pink iridescence like duochrome to it it's it's really cool so I have to use it sparingly I'll use it kind of like as a finishing powder and like the high points of my face I won't brush it all over because it looks a little bit crazy but um, it's really interesting it's really pretty all right let's move on to the next drawer all right this drawer is kind of a mess <laughs> this is like my cream and liquid product drawer and I just realized I'm missing something it was on my vanity but my Chanel pearly glow and my Tower 28. Okay, where to start? So there's really no rhyme or reason. I I was storing things by like blushes and highlights and bronzers, and then I was storing things by shape, you know, like the sticks over here and the bottles over here and the compacts over there. But it just, it gets, it gets really, really crazy. So no rhyme or reason. If you're looking for organizational tips here, you're not gonna get them. We have, let's see, a Frank Body Illuminator. This is a really pretty, like cream highlight. The Decorte Dip Glow, Dip and Glow. This is also a beautiful cream highlight. Really love this one. And then this is actually a Clay de Poe cream eyeshadow, but I really like using it as a highlight because it's just, it's the perfect tone. It has the perfect like light shimmer to it. This is a shade 308, which I think was limited edition, but it's really, it's just gorgeous. And here is a Clay de Poe cream blush in number four. I wish they would come out with more shades, but this is a great, great formula. Love this. And then here is the RMS um, Buriti Bronzers, another one of my favorites. It's such a unique shade. It has like a purpley tinge to it. The Lila B Be, Be Captivating. This is um, a deep highlight for them. I like to use it as like a shimmery bronzer. The Tower 28 Beach Please in Happy Hour. Love this. This Ket Cosmetics Fix Cream Makeup in Daiquiri. Really beautiful. Sorry, doing a little organizing. This is the um, Lila B Be Lovely. It's the Lip and Cheek Duo. So it's this really rich kind of deep nude color. It's very pretty. And then I have um, all of the By Terry um, Brightening CC Serums. So I have a lot of the shades. This one was limited edition. Um, was this one limited edition? This is the Rose Blanc. Maybe not. 
and then I have the apricot glow um, the one that's a little bit more pink and then this one which I think is sunny flash I think is what this one's called this is a great great like bronze like complexion bronzer if you want to put it down before your foundation or mix it into foundation it's really lovely they all have a very strong by Terry Rose scent if you're not into that just be warned um, Hollywood Flawless Filter. Love this product. I have it in the shade number two. Really gorgeous. Again, under foundation, over foundation, in foundation. It's beautiful. And then I've got all the Tom Ford Glow Drops. Uh, this is Liquid Sun. This is Reflex Guilt. This one is Liquid Sky. And then this one is Glacial Rose. And then I have the Armani Neo Nude Contour, which is a really lovely light uh, liquid contour and then back here I have two of the whoa two of the um, hourglass highlighting sticks I really love these um, I have champagne flash and rose gold flash this is rose gold flash and then this is champagne flash champagne flash is definitely my favorite of the two I have the Tom Ford skin illuminator in fire lust I think this is the only shade in the skin illuminator and it comes now in like a round bottle I don't even know if they still have it. I think they do, but this is great. If you want to mix into foundation, if you've gotten a little bit of color or whatever, this is wonderful. Like one pump and it just like shades you up one. A Suku liquid blush, which I kind of forgot I had. How embarrassing. This is the shimmer liquid blush in number one. And then I have a Chanel um, Soleil Tan de Chanel. This is the previous version and I feel like I've used this a bit and just I have so much which is why I never got the new one because I just have so much of this one Let's see Grande Cosmetics sent me um, all of their liquid blushes and liquid highlighters that they just came out with really really gorgeous and I love that they're in basically like a lip gloss uh, packaging because the doe foot applicator makes it really easy to apply it to your cheeks so that is what all of these are and then I have a bunch of the Charlotte Tilbury light wands I have the glowgasm pinkgasm I have the pillow talk and then the pillow talk medium which is a little bit too deep for me I actually haven't played with these since I got them I should uh, the La Mer um, highlighting duo I have it in here because it has this cream side uh, which I really enjoy. I love them both. And then this powder is actually very creamy too. So anyway, I just leave it in here. The new Carolina Herrera cream highlight. Gorgeous. Absolutely love it. I hope they restock this again because I think they did and then it sold out again. Um, but this is really lovely. Glossier cloud paints. I have Storm, Haze, Puff, um, Dawn. Is that it? Oh, one more. And Dusk. And then more of the Grande Cosmetics blushes. Um, here are the MAC Glow Play blushes. I have three of those shades. And then I have a bunch of the Chantecaille um, Cheek Gelés. I have Happy and I have Vibrant. And then I have the Radiance Gel Bronzer, which is a lovely, lovely cream bronzer, cream liquid bronzer. I have this from LXMI. This is um, a hydrating illuminator. This They sent this to me and I've been wanting to play with it and I just keep forgetting about it. I need to just kind of stick it up here. And then I have the M Cosmetics. Oh, I always get the name wrong. It's like color serum drop blushes or color drop serum blushes. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, I have all of the shades. This is Sunset Sky. This is Pink Nectar. Um, this is Rose Milk, and I have one more, which is all the way back there, so we'll get that <laughs> when we get there. Um, I have some Kira Weiss cream blushes. This one is Desired Glow, and then this is one that I just talked about in my favorites. This one is Above and Beyond. Isn't that beautiful? And then here is the Westman Atelier um, Peau de Soleil. So this is like a cream bronzer for me but it is very, very shimmery, like a highlight. It's gorgeous. We've got the Le Beige, um, Chanel Le Beige Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluids. This is Pearly Glow. This one is Sunkissed, I believe. Yeah, Sunkissed. And then I have this um, Gloss Lumiere from Chanel. I can't pronounce that. Um, but this is a great, like, iridescent, like, face gloss. It's really, really pretty for just 
kind of like a light, subtle, kind of like fun, funness <laughs> on your cheeks. The Giorgio Armani Fluid Sheer, number two. Two of my Glossier Play liquid highlighters. The Chanel LeBlanc Rosy Light Drops. And then here's the Lila B Cream Highlighter in B Enchanting. So this is the one I would use as an actual highlighter, um, unlike the other one that was more of a bronze. Oh. And then here is that other M Cosmetics Soft Amethyst Color Serum Blush Drops. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a bunch of these bubble blushes, which I love, and these were all limited edition. So this is from Guerlain. This is the Meteorites one in rose. And then I have two from Chantikai, Red Ginger and Marigold. I, I just love these so much. Um, and then this, my very dear friend Takashi gave me when I met up with him in New York. Um, this was the limited edition Charlotte Tilbury Norman Parkinson cream bronze and glow duo. So it's this collection. I don't know if you guys remember this, but there's Jerry Hall and I haven't used it. I probably will never use it because this is just such a beautiful like collector's edition. But these are cream products. I wonder why she didn't do this like permanently. Yeah, Film Star Bronze and Glow, Suntan and Sunlight. I think this would be a great thing for her to do, like cream products. Yeah, I think so. And then I have this um, Kier Weiss like palette. So I have like a bronzer, a highlight, foundation. This is like a lip and cheek thing, and then two powder eyeshadows. And then I have a lot of uh, <laughs> stick products. These are all like highlights and blushes and everything kind of mixed in. So I have the new Natasha Denona Face Glow Cream Shimmer in number two medium beige. This is actually really, really lovely. I was using this quite a bit when I first got it and then kind of got sucked into this vortex of products. I have a bunch of the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Glow Sticks. This one is Sunstruck. So there's a highlight on one side, blush on the other. This one is Mejev, highlight, bronzer. This one is Courcheval, so highlight and, was I saying bronzer? I meant blush. This is like a highlight and blush. I like using this actually on the lips. This one is really beautiful. And then this one is Soleil Neige. And then I have the Pat McGrath sticks. These are her highlighting sticks uh, with the balm at one end. So they all have this clear balm at one end and then they have a highlight. So this one is bronze. I love this packaging. This is probably some of my favorite packaging of all time. This one is golden. And then this one is nude. This is the one I definitely used the most. And then I've got um, some Westman Atelier uh, Baby Cheeks blush sticks. This one is Pop It. This one just showed up in my favorites. This one is Couchette, Chouchette. <laughs> and then this one is Petal. This is the first one I got. Really nice nudie rose color. And then I have some Surratt highlighters. These have totally gotten lost in my collection. I love these. This one is Rose Diamante and like real diamond powder was used in here. So gorgeous. And then this one is Diamante. And then I have a contour and a highlight from Westman Atelier. This highlight stick is actually great as a primer. It's kind of like a balm with a little iridescence in there. And then uh, the stick contour uh, in the shade Biscuit, which is the only shade that they have. And then I have a bunch of the Chanel sticks. So I have Two of the blushes, this is number 20 and number 23. So here's 20, here's 23. And then these are two Balm Essential. This is Golden Light, which is kind of like a bronze. And then this one is Sculpting, which is like a subtle highlight. I've got the Terracotta from Guerlain in Nude. This was the highlighter stick. This is gorgeous. This is one of my favorite highlighting sticks. It's just, oh, it's so like really, really high shine and it's unexpected because it doesn't look like that much brighter than any of these other ones, but it really, really is highly reflective. Um, and then I have a Nude Sticks Nudies Bloom all over dewy color in Tiger Lily Queen. Isn't that pretty? 
This one I need to whip out for the warmer months. Then I've got a couple of Sisley sticks. I have the contour and a blush in Passion. And then I have this limited edition from Clay de Poe. This is Light Me, it's their stick illuminator. And then over here, I just have some more cream products and compacts. Um, this is the Kosas uh, Tropic Equinox Color and Light Cream. This is a beautiful product. The Palette Essentielle from Chanel in the shade number 150 Beige Eclair. This is so great if you're just looking for a simple look, throw in the bag kind of a thing. This is like a great kind of like travel palette. And then here is the Westman Atelier Peau de Peche. Where'd it go? Here. <laughs> So this is a great, kind of like, um, I wear this as a blush. There's a little bit of peach in there. Once you get it on your cheeks, it looks very, very kind of like brown in the pan, but it's very, very peach. Love it. I have the RMS Living Luminizer palette. It has like a bunch of the cream highlights in there. Bunch of the Tom Ford cream cheek colors. This one is Paradiso. This one is... Piane Soleil, and this one is Pink Sand. This is from Victoria Beckham and Estee Lauder, and this is probably way too old to have in my collection, but I just love it. I love the little compact. I loved, loved this collaboration that they did, so I'm going to hold on to it. <laughs> um, two De Corte cream cheek products. Isn't that color cool? The NARS Orgasm palette with cream products. I really liked this palette. I don't think this was very popular. I think <laughs> I think I have an unpopular opinion here. The Endless Orgasm palette, but I thought it was really pretty on the cheeks. The Hourglass Illume Trio. I don't know why this isn't like permanent or around more often. This is an awesome cream palette. And then I have the Shade and Illuminate uh, palettes from Tom Ford. This is Intensity 0 0.5 and this is Intensity 1. I can use both. 0 0.5 I can be kind of more careless with and this one I have to be a little bit more careful with. All right, so I have been talking for an hour <laughs> and I don't think there are a lot of breaks in there. So I can't believe I only got through four drawers here, but I'm going to cut this off here. And this is going to be a multi-parted um, collection video. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a thumbs up to let me know that uh, you enjoy these collection videos. I will keep them coming. And subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.